Bernie Marino takes it home. What's your initial reaction? One unique asset in this race that this was really a difficult race to distinguish uh, the candidates from each other. They talked a lot about the same things, believed in a lot of the same things, but Moreno ultimately had one thing the other two didn't, and that was enough to carry him to victory today. Do you think that the physical appearance by Donald Trump over the weekend was what carried him over the line, or do you think the simple endorsement was what it was? Well, the endorsement helped, but the challenge was to make sure that every Republican knew about the endorsement. And I think that rally was a big part in solidifying knowledge. And we're certainly seeing a pretty big disparity between the early voters, almost all of whom voted before that rally, and the primary day voters who heard more about that rally, saw the rally. You know, obviously another distinction is just the kinds of voters who show up early versus on primary day. But, you know, I think the bottom line is, the rally helped, the endorsement helped, but people needed to know about the endorsement for it ultimately to do any good. And that was what the rally was about. Instead of looking back, let's look a little bit forward now, because when it comes to Sherrod Brown, a guy who's seen as a, a centrist, kind of a reasonable guy when you're talking about people up in Washington, uh, it, Dolan was painted more as the centrist, Marino more as the extremist in, in, in the early days here. And I think a lot of people were trying to say Marino has less of a chance against Brown because of some of those more extreme views. How do you see this matchup going come November? Well, certainly Democrats, including Senator Schumer from New York, are very happy with the result. This is the Republican they wanted to see in the race. And for Sherrod Brown, I think the key is he is always talking about the dignity of work. He is always talking about blue collar concerns. And I think from his campaign's perspective, they're very happy to run against somebody whose main occupation in life has been as a car dealer and who has, you know, some some legal, you know, ensnarements involving that car dealership. So I think they like that contrast of what Sherrod Brown represents versus what Bernie Moreno represents. But to be fair, I mean, the last several years, Ohio has shifted significantly to the right. Does Sherrod Brown, no matter who it is, really stand a chance in this race? Well, Ohio hasn't shifted to the right. It's shifted to the Republicans, which is two different things. You've seen, you know, when the candidates are on the ballot, Ohio go very Republican. But when issues are on the ballot, including reproductive rights in November, Ohio votes fairly moderate to liberal on issues. So Sherrod Brown needs to thread that needle between that party propensity to vote Republican and the issue beliefs in Ohio, which are pretty, you know, middle of the road to liberal. You know, certainly the bottom line here is Democrats in Ohio have lost every single statewide race with a Democratic label on the ballot, except when Sherrod Brown's been on that ballot. That's been true for more than a decade. And this will be a test of whether Sherrod Brown can continue to hold out against a party tide that's clearly been against him. And, and that's the kind of final thing that I wanted to address there was what is going to be the messaging? Because it's almost siloed off, right? We, we talked the last time about how it's all border, border, border for Republicans, even though that's mm -hmm. not really impacting Ohio in a, in a grand way. It's all reproductive rights and things along those lines for Democrats. Do you think any of these candidates will be able to reach across the aisle with their messaging to be able to reach some people, the centrists, the people in the, in the middle? Well, Sherrod Brown wouldn't be a U.S. senator right now if he didn't have a history of reaching people in the middle, of reaching beyond you know, the boundaries of his own party. And, you know, if you went back a generation or two, almost half the Senate was elected in states that were going against the senator's party. Today, we're down to a handful of those senators, Sherrod Brown being one of them. And what those senators have in common who can win in places their party isn't popular is people have a sense of them as a person. And that's really a key part of this. Sherrod Brown wants this to be a race about the people in the race. Bernie Moreno is going to want this race to be about the party labels in the race. Everything I came, away, uh, came with, David, am I missing uh, any major takeaway that you're looking at? You know, just the, the interesting aspect of this Republican race, it was a sprint. It really was a January, February, and a couple weeks of March, and that was the entire campaign. This was a tough race for these three candidates to distinguish themselves from each other on, and it really the Trump endorsement was the single golden ticket in the race, and it was enough to push Bernie Moreno to victory.